we come to our normal flying field and uh, a really big secret that everybody needs to realize when you're first starting to fly a, a new hawk or a new falcon is you should fly a new bird in an area where there are no obstructions higher than you can reach for more than a mile. And so, Sue, would you kind of pan around here so we can see what, what the area looks like? And as you see, there's no power poles, there's no tall trees, there's no cliffs, there's no ledges. We're a very, very long way. And, um, and so this way, the, the bird uh, focuses on the only perch available, which is, which is me. And, and uh, if the bird does fly off and land somewhere, I can walk over and pick it up. And so this is a, a safe thing for those of you um, who live in areas that don't have the kinds of vast open spaces that we do here in the West. I'm sorry, this, this is really a much better area for training birds than, than it is in forested areas that are like back east. Okay, okay, my goodness sakes. You just think you have to go kill something because you're ready to fly, huh, sweetie? You are, you're all ready. Ready to go. So this is little Bell. Hey, sweetheart, look what I've got. Nope. Oh, yes, I've got a Piper. bird for you. And Piper. <laughs> got too many birds going right now. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, basically get him to fly off the glove and then I'll bring the lure out and I'll whistle and I'll bring him back around. We've got cars coming, so we're going to move away from the road and let the cars pass. Now we have a, a light breeze coming from the east, coming from that direction, and it's always nice to launch a bird into the wind. And so we'll kind of turn and go that direction. That way? One more time. Now that's a single stoop to the lure because she only goes around once. And in a day or two, we're going to increase that number to two and and then uh, three or four, then five or six, then fifteen or twenty. And uh, 
pretty soon she'll be diving and climbing, diving and climbing, diving and climbing, building up her strength and her agility. Yes, he will. He'll be building up his strength and his agility. Yes, you will. Ready to go again? Piper. We lost the beat that was on it. <laughs> it's okay. Can lose the meat that's on it. And we always hook him up real fast because if he pulls this mouse out from my fingers, they do have a tendency of wanting to snatch and run, which basically means I've got my food, now I'm going to fly away with it. And so we'd never want to let that happen. There's my Piper. Good boy. There's my boy. Oh, yes, you are such a good boy. I know, you're still hungry. There's my brother. That little training session is over. And if it seems like these training sessions are really, really short, they are. Um, but very soon, these training sessions will will go for an hour and, and sometimes longer. So it, it's just again, it's a it's a step by step process to get these guys flying and, and hunting properly. Time to put your swivel back on. If I can find it in my pocket here. There you go. Yes, there's my little boy. Take off your telemetry. There we go. And this is his radio transmitter, or GPS transmitter, so if he does end up getting lost somewhere, I can go track him down. Welcome to uh, 17 miles north of Cedar City, out to our favorite flying field for the Falcon. And it's, uh, it's a beautiful morning. It's uh, 61 degrees outside. And so it's, it's really quite nice with the exception if you can, I know it's probably hard to see, but <clears throat> normally you can see all the, all the mountains surrounding uh, this valley, you know, 20 plus miles away. And with all the smoke from the fires, um, the air quality is very, very poor. And it's really hard to see. Uh, very far at all, but we're here. We're here with the with the, the birds now. Uh, for the last uh, for the last week, uh, 
Piper the Falcon has been flying free and has been playing with her toy, her lure, her favorite toy. And so she's, she's trained to the lure, she flies to the glove, and now we're at the point in our falconry training that um, basically destroys falconers. The prairie falcon is high strung and aggressive and can be quite vocal. Um, we try everything we can uh, with these young prairie falcons to, to not allow them to imprint. And Piper's a very good example. Uh, Piper was uh, five weeks old when he came to me, so he was mostly grown up. Uh, and then for the next five weeks after that, he was in a chamber with a female prairie falcon that finished raising him. So he's basically chamber raised with another falcon so he wouldn't imprint on humans. And, um, and even at that, he's still, he's still a prairie falcon. He can still be quite vocal. And what we're gonna do today is um, the, the, we're going to start teaching him uh, to, fly, to fly away from me, gain altitude, and and uh, we want him to, to go up a thousand two thousand feet in the sky but right now he's been trained to come to me and so we need to kind of reverse that process a little bit so that he will not not just come to me when I whistle for him but he'll fly away from me and fly free like a wild falcon and so uh, what you're gonna see is him um, probably at his worst he'll throw his tantrums uh, he'll be uh, uh, quite vocal, and, and that's to be expected. And, and so it won't be, uh, it'll be about another week or so, and, and he'll be very, very bored with me because, you know, we come out here and we just stand around and do a whole lot of nothing. And, and then he'll start exploring, and then he'll start flying, and, and that's, that's when he starts to figure out that he is, he is a wild falcon and he can fly free. And, and then we start to produce wild quarry for him. So um, here, let's get Piper out, get him started. And as you can hear, he's already talking because he, he knows that um, we're, we're going to go let him fly, that I've got food for him. Now this is his toy, this is his lure. This is basically, it's, it's a, a leather pigeon is what it is. And it's, it's very, very soft. And we have, as we've been flying him, I've been swinging this around, he's been chasing this. And, and when he catches this toy, he gets the food that's on the toy. And so we'll put a little food on the toy for him. Yes, Piper, we're coming. I know you're impatient. You're a prairie falcon. Yes, you are. And so up to this time, uh, we've been flying him on the lure and giving him several flying sessions. And, and, but now it's just one flying session, uh, but we just let him, let him fly free and, and until for, we'll be out here for about 10 or 15 minutes. And, and as he uh, goose, goose off before he starts figuring out what's going on. Hi, Piper. Hi, baby. Oh, there's my boy. Come here. Give it noisy. Well, I know. That's my baby. <coughs> now, this is this is not anger. This is not um, fear. The noise that he is making is. Um, you're my, you're my food source. Feed me now. I am demanding you to feed me, and and, and so this this is um, kind of spoiled rotten is what this is, and and so it'll take a take a little while to get past spoiled rotten young falcon, but he's still a cute thing. Come out here. See on my other side, please. Rotten. Hey, Mr. Spoiled Rotten. 
and like I said, this this is the point that um, that falconers um, uh, don't have the patience, that they give up, that they think their bird is is never going to be any good, and, and it's just a matter of um, of surviving this part of the training, and and then you and then you have a, a young falcon that that flies incredibly well. Now there's a lot of ways that we can do this to teach them to get altitude. Uh, some some falconers will use uh, kites and and tie food on a kite, put a kite up uh, extremely high, and let the falcon go up to the kite uh, to get its food. Uh, some falconers will use uh, um, helium balloons and let let the helium balloon take the um, the food up to to great heights. Uh, some falconers are using drones now, and, and so there's a, a variety of methods. My personal preference is to to use Mother Nature, and what we what we do is we come out when the when it's just starting to warm up a little bit, and as it starts to warm up, the ground starts to warm, <clears throat> the air on the air at the ground will start to get nice and warm. It'll start to rise, and that warm rising air is. Um, once the falcon is flying away from me, that warm rising air allows allows the falcon to to get lift and will go higher and higher in the sky. And so I, I like to just let Mother Nature uh, teach teach my birds in, instead of using artificial methods. Oh, Piper, you are so cute! You're such a cute little monster. You're a prairie falcon monster. Yes, you are. Are you about ready? enough. He's also, um, he's been chasing little lizards, he's been chasing little birds, he's been, you know, he's been being a little prairie falcon, so that's a good thing. And if he happens to catch a little lizard or bird, you know, that's, that, that we have to let him eat it. Because, you know, you never, never steal from them. And so for all of you out here, this is a very boring, a very boring video because this is not exciting. This is not lure flying. This is not uh, falcons diving at 200 miles an hour. This is just a young falcon. And see, it just actually chased a little bird. And so that's what they do. You know, she, and he's just going to goof off a little bit. And he says, "Where did the little bird go? I tried to catch it." He landed out there. Oh yeah, he's right here. Kind of walk up to him as he's digging through the brush, trying to find what happened to the little bird that he chased. And this is good. Like I said, we're allowing him to kind of figure out what a prairie falcon is. Hi, baby boy. You want to look for more small birds, huh? Hi. Hi. It wasn't there again. Yes. You know, and, and this kind of demonstrates something I try to teach to people. Um, you know, 80% of all birds of prey don't survive the first year. Everything's learned. And, and so this little guy right here is learning these little uh, horned larks we have flying around here. This is a normal part of his of a wild prairie falcon's diet. And so he's kind of learning uh, to be a prairie falcon. And the, the great thing is that... Um, this is not a sink or swim for him. If he if he's not successful, he doesn't die. Uh, and so, with with uh, a falconer to help him, 
he gets all the time that he needs to learn how to be a prairie falcon and learn how to fly and learn how to hunt. Uh, and so, you know, we give him lots and lots of those kinds of opportunities. Oh, pretty piper. Yes, he says, I'm not screaming because I'm happy. I'm really interested in what's going on around me. And so, so for most falconers, this is, this is the, the really challenging time. For me, I really enjoy this. I, I really enjoy the watching him think and watching him try to figure things out. Nice little trip. It was. That was a nice little trip. Yes, that was a good trip. What a pretty boy. He is so cute. I just I just love his the the way he he thinks. You, know, you just see the little wheels turning in that little pea brain of his. It's just, it's just so much fun to watch. And uh, the, the first time he catches his first real warm rising air called a thermal, boy, that's, you know, you just watch, he just go, kind of goes out a distance and he hits that warm air and the air starts to rise and he fans his tail and fans his wings just as big as he can get them and that air just starts to lift him up and, and you could just almost feel his joy as that as that warm rising air is taking him skyward. And once he figures that out, um, it becomes an addiction to them. They just love um, going up to, to tremendous altitudes. And so that's, that's uh, and it, like I said, it's a process. It really is. It's a daily process, but he is being such a good little boy. We're so pleased with him. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Oh, yes, what a rouse. Should we walk around a little bit more, huh, baby? There we go. There. See, we had him do, do a, a nice circle uh, on his own without any encouragement. And, uh, and so as he was airborne, I threw the lure. And that's very, very important. You don't want to throw the lure when, when he is uh, on the ground. Uh, that teaches him the wrong thing. I want him to know that when he's in the air, uh, that's, that's when the lure comes out and food comes out. And again, we only do that. We only do that, um, you know, once or twice because we, we want uh, Piper to be really excited about that lure and, uh, and the lesson for the day has been learned. So he gets a nice breakfast. That's my boy. And his breakfast is a, a white mouse. But he'll actually get two of them. Yes, he'll get two of them. Such a good boy. Now you see he's covering the mouse, and the reason he's covering the mouse with his wings, this is called mantling, and this is an instinctive behavior. What this means is, is he doesn't want other predators in the area to see that he's got food. And so he kind of hides it a little bit. And you see, he's not hiding it from me, but he's hiding it in case there's other predators around. Uh, and um, yes, there's, your, there's the mouse's tail. And here's your second one, baby.
So that's why in the early training you always turn them back to face you so they get used to facing you when they ate. Yeah, I, I always want yeah, I always want them. I don't want their backs to me. I um there, that leads to some really bad behaviors. Uh, one of them, and he's, he's thinking about it right now, is called a snatch and run. And a snatch and run is is basically, you know, I've got my food in my in my fist, and now I'm going to fly away. I'm going to steal it, and uh, and I'm going to fly off and eat uh, where there's nobody else to watch me. And we we don't want that. And so we we never allow them. This is why I've got him hooked up already, as he's been feeding. So that, that he, um, if he does try a snatch and run, that um, he can't get away with it. See, there you go. You don't want to reward yeah. undesirable behavior. Yeah, and, and this is this is typical. Uh, uh, you know, I'm a baby, and I'm going to and I'm going to run away because in the wild he would have, um, you know, three or four more baby prairie falcons. If they saw him have food, that he had food, he would, he, they would basically attack and steal the food from him. And, and so this is an instinctive behavior that helps uh, keep him from being bullied and, and starved to death by the other falcons. Well, I know. It just takes a minute for you to calm down. And see, all of these behaviors that you're seeing here, this is all instinctive behaviors. This is not, um, th this is all hardwired into his brain. And so this is, this is not that he's mad or anything else. This is the way um, Mother Nature has made him in, in, in order to, uh, to succeed in, in, in the wild. And, and so without these behaviors, um, he would he would not succeed, and he would end up uh, either either uh, starving to death or or end up being killed by something else. So these behaviors is what he'd be exhibiting to the other falcons in the wild. Yes, his, his parents or siblings. Yes, exactly. And so this is perfectly perfectly normal behavior, and we just uh, kind of work through it real gently with him. You know, we don't steal his food. That would be a bad thing. Um, but we do play with his feet and try to encourage him to go ahead and, uh, and, and eat while we're playing with his food so he feels that he needs to eat. Huh, baby? Here's my boy. Here's my piper. Yes, I know. We've got your second mouse. And you seem to do that with your second mouse more than your first one, huh? You do. You do that with your second mouse. Yeah. We'll play with your feet. Yeah, some guys on bicycles. take him another five or ten minutes to eat that yeah it takes a few minutes you know when he, when he decides that that he that his instincts say that he has to go find a place to hide you have to find a place to hide and you gotta stay with me sorry that's just the rules since he just showed off his pretty little blue capsule on his tail feathers you can explain what that is Oh, uh, this right here, this is actually a GPS transmitter, and it's it's connected on, onto uh, a plate that is connected to two of his tail feathers. And um, this basically, if he does end up going someplace, um, you know, catching, let's say catching one of these small uh, uh, horned larks um, a mile or so away, and I've got to go find him, well, this is a little GPS transmitter, and it's sending a signal to the, to the cell phone, Right, right here, Oops. to my cell phone, and uh, hard to multitask. It is. I don't multitask well. And um, 
I, I know it's hard for you to see, but uh, can turn it down. you can hear a little beep sound. Yeah, and and so that is basically the. Uh, Not getting a good image. Yeah, that's fine. But that that's that basically uh, allows me to uh, to find the bird even when it's a a, a few miles away. My little boy. There you go. You got food right there. Your food's right there, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Here's your food. Mm -hmm. Here's your food. That's a good boy. Yeah, throw the guts away. You don't throw them at me. But you're a good target. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my boy. Such a good boy. Yes, you are. Yeah, I know I'm crowding you, but that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm crowding you. So you know that I don't steal. I never, never steal from my little boy. That's my piper. Yeah, you got right there at your foot. You got a piece. Got a good piece there. Yes, you do. Such a good boy. Swallow that tail, huh? I got another piece right there. Yes, you do. Another nice piece. Okay, I gotta turn you back around where you belong. You gotta face me. Yes, there's my boy. Here's my pretty boy. Sweetie. 